Learning Chinese as a beginner can be confusing. Here are answers to 50 common questions asked by new learners. Hello and welcome to the Hacking Chinese podcast. This week's episode is for all the beginners out there. I'm recording this in late August, and around this time of year, many people have either just started learning Chinese or they are about to. I also started learning Chinese in August, although that was 15 years ago now. But I still remember what it was like, and I also remember many of the things that confused us as new students. Naturally, when learning a new language, there are many things that we don't understand, we don't know what words mean, how to express ourselves, and so on. But these types of questions are usually rather easy to find answers to. You can use a dictionary, you can ask your teacher, and so on. However, there is a different set of questions that is much harder to find answers to. And these relate to how to learn the language and things related to learning Chinese as an adult. And this is not something that your average Chinese teacher will be able to give you good answers to, because most of them didn't learn Chinese as an adult. They learned it growing up, and that is rather different. I started learning Chinese when I was 23, and I have, of course, in the past 15 years, spent a lot of time learning the language, teaching the language, and researching these things. And so in this episode, I want to share answers to 50 common questions asked by beginners. The goal here is not to give full, complete answers to each question, that would take a podcast episode at least for each question, or sometimes much more, but rather to succinctly answer the question and then provide more information for those who really want it. And since it is rather impractical to include links in a podcast like this, I'd like to mention that there is a written version of this episode on Hacking Chinese with all the questions and answers, where each contains at least one link. So if you don't understand my answer, you want more, maybe you don't agree, or you don't understand my reasoning, then there is more material for all these questions. It's just that if I spend only a few minutes on each question, this episode will be several hours long. And in order to not make it even longer than it will already be, let's get down to the 50 questions. I have sorted the questions into six categories, and they are 1. Questions about learning Chinese as an adult. So this would be general questions about what it's like to learn Chinese as an adult and what you can do to make it easier. Category number 2 is courses, textbooks, teachers and guidance, and that should be rather self-explanatory. Category 3 is about speaking, listening and conversing in Chinese. And then category 4 goes into details about Mandarin tones and pronunciation. Then category 5 talks about reading, writing, and communicating in text. And then the final one is about Chinese characters, words, and grammar. And if you're only interested in a specific part here, I think using the written article is probably a better idea, but here I will go through them in the order I just mentioned. Okay, so let's start with the questions about learning Chinese as an adult. So question number one is, am I too old to learn Chinese? No, you're not, but you might be too busy or too lazy. While some things become harder with age, it's not something that you can influence, so it's more productive to focus on things that you have a say about. Three factors determine how much Chinese you learn, and that is content, time, and method. So, in essence, what you're learning, how much time you spend, and how you're learning. And if you optimize those three, you'll be able to learn Chinese regardless of how old you are. Question number two. How hard is it to learn Chinese? I would say that Chinese is hard to learn, but not as hard as some say. Learning the language is hard in the sense that walking a thousand miles is hard, not in the sense that climbing a mountain is hard. Invest the time and energy and you will reach your goals. Some things are also easier than in other languages, especially as a beginner. For example, you don't need to worry so much about tenses and different verb forms and gender and so on and so forth. Question number three. How long do I have to study Chinese before it becomes useful? I think that learning Chinese can be incredibly useful even if you just learn a little bit. So in that sense, it's useful from day one. Of course, how useful it is to you depends on what you intend to use it for, and so it's difficult to give a general answer here. Because, well, the more you learn, the more useful it becomes. You can certainly reach a level where you can have conversations about everyday topics in around 500 hours of studying or so. If you study 5 hours a week, that will take you 2 years, but if you study full-time, you can easily achieve this in just a few months. Moving on to question number 4. There are so many things to learn, what should I focus on first? 
That depends on your goal for learning Chinese. Uh, we are all different, so something that is essential for someone might not be important for you and the other way around. So first, figure out what your long-term goal is and make sure that you let that guide your decisions about what to focus on. So for example, if you're mostly interested in the spoken language, it's okay to ignore characters, at least to begin with. Question number five. I'm busy with other things. How can I find time to learn? In general, you should start looking at time in a different way. You are not confined to specific hours of studying. Instead, you should spread learning out over the day and across other activities. For example, even if you're very busy, you can probably squeeze in a few hours of Chinese each week on your way to work while you exercise or while you do other things. The next question is about asking questions. So if you have a question that I haven't answered here, what should you do? Well, to begin with, you can check out my frequently asked questions article where I answer more than a hundred questions about learning Chinese. And that's not only for beginners, but many things are of course relevant for beginners as well. You can also just ask me directly by sending an email to editor at hackingchinese.com or reach out on Twitter or other social media platform. Naturally, I don't have all the answers and there are many websites, discussion forums and so on that are dedicated to discussing and answering questions about learning Chinese. As usual, refer to the written article on Hacking Chinese for links to these things. So now to the final question in this category. Do you have more structured guidance for beginners? And yes, like I said, learning Chinese as a beginner can be rather confusing. And maybe answering 50 questions is not the most structured way to get somebody off to a good start. And that is why I have also created a course for beginners called Unlocking Chinese, the ultimate course for beginners. And you can learn more about that on unlockingchinese.com. It is essentially a video course where I summarize everything that's most important for beginners to know about, both about how to learn the language and the basics of the language itself. So characters, pronunciation, and so on. You also get to learn 150 words and read some text and listen to audio related to those. Let's move on to category number two, courses, textbooks, teachers, and guidance. Is it a good idea to enroll in a Chinese course? A course provides you with structure, content, and guidance, which are rather handy when you first start out. Enrolling in a course is often a good idea, I would say, but you can definitely learn on your own as well, if you prefer. Naturally, most people do both. Even if you enroll in a course, there will be many things that you have to study on your own anyway. If you are studying on your own and you're afraid of missing things, you can check out Unlocking Chinese that I just mentioned. The next question is, which course should I enroll in and which school should I choose? And these are of course related. But these questions are very hard to answer. I would say they are impossible to answer because there are so many different factors that play into this, such as where you're going, how much money you have, who you are, and so on and so forth. Here I will not try to summarize my thoughts on this, but I will put a link to an article that discusses this directly in the description. The next question is, are there any important things that my course won't cover? And this is a bit of a trick question, because most beginners don't ask this question, but they really should. And well, the answer of course depends on the course. In general, you can not rely on your course to provide everything you need. For example, teachers generally don't tell you much about how to learn, so you are left mostly on your own there. They also spend way too much time explaining how Chinese works in English, and they don't encourage you to read and listen nearly as much as you should. And I think it's important to realize that you're the one learning the language, and even if you feel that it's very convenient to pass this responsibility on to somebody else, such as your teacher, it's your learning that will be impacted by things that are, say, left out of your course. So do take some time and think about why you are learning Chinese, compare that with the goals of your course, and then see if there are areas that aren't covered, i.e. things that you might want to know or skills that you want to develop, but that really aren't covered in the course, or the other way around. Like I said before, it could be that you're mostly interested in the spoken language and then spending dozens of hours on handwriting characters as a beginner is rather pointless. Moving on to the next question. Do I have to go abroad to learn Chinese or can I learn it from home? You can definitely learn Chinese from home, but immersion helps. And at home, if you are going to have some kind of immersion, you need to actively find learning opportunities. You need to create this environment on your own. 
Whereas if you go to, say, China to learn Chinese, you have Chinese all around you and the learning opportunities will intrude in your life, whether you want them to or not. So there's nothing magic about going abroad, it just makes some things a little bit easier. What counts is how much you engage with the language, not where you are geographically located. This cuts both ways, so it's perfectly possible to live in China for 10 years and still not learn much Chinese. Moving on. I have time but no money. Can I learn Chinese using only free resources? Yes, you certainly can. There are tons of learning materials online and I have catalogued most of the good ones on hacking Chinese resources. I will also recommend some of the most important resources later in this episode. Still, I should mention that there are some resources that really are worth paying for, and I've written an article separately about that, and as usual, you can check the links in the written article on Hacking Chinese. Next, how can I make sure I practice the right things? I think that using Paul Nation's four strands to categorize your learning activities is a good way to start, and the emphasis here is on meaning-focused input and output which means conveying or understanding meaning rather than drilling characters, words or grammar. There is also fluency development, which entails getting better at what you already know. And then we do have language-focused learning, which encompasses most things that are going on in traditional Chinese classrooms. But this really shouldn't take up more than a small minority of your total study time. The next question is about textbooks, namely, what are the most popular textbooks? There are many Chinese textbooks out there, but I think Integrated Chinese and New Practical Chinese Reader are very popular, and here you can choose between both simplified and traditional versions, and I'll address this issue later. And if you want a Taiwan-focused textbook, I suggest a course in Contemporary Chinese. And if you want to check out more resources for learning Chinese, like I said, I do have Hacking Chinese resources where I've catalogued more than 500 of them, and they are all tagged by level, topic, and type, so it should be rather easy to find what you are looking for. Let's move on to category 3, which is about speaking, listening, and conversing. So what should I focus on to get the best results as a beginner? You should focus on listening as much as possible. Your speaking ability is the tip of the iceberg built on a much larger amount of listening. You need tons of comprehensible input to build up your mental model of what Mandarin sounds like. So again, like I said before, meaning-focused input, listen as much as you can. Next question. I'm not comfortable practicing Chinese with real people. What should I do? As I just mentioned, you can start by focusing more on listening, and it might feel like you're not learning much, but you are, and this will result in speaking ability further down the line. If you are an introverted student, I've written about that specifically, and one suggestion is to use voice messaging, so you record your messages, somebody else listens to them, they record something in return, and this slows everything down and makes it much more manageable. Will doing drills help me speak Chinese? Well, a little bit, but probably not as much as you or your teacher think. Try to focus as much as you can on conveying and receiving information when speaking and listening, like I said before. How much time should I spend on theory such as grammar and pronunciation? As an adult, it can help to understand the basic theory, but this should be combined with much more time engaging with the language in communicative exercises. When it comes to pronunciation specifically, make sure you get feedback, as it can be hard to identify your own errors. How can I get feedback on my spoken Chinese? There are many types of feedback. You receive implicit feedback when people react to the way you talk, and you can get explicit feedback when someone points out some of your mistakes. Either way, you really need feedback, especially on pronunciation. Also, someone saying that your Chinese is great does not count as feedback, even though it is nice. If you want brutally honest feedback from a native speaker who isn't trained in doing this, you can use something called Tone Pair Bingo or Minimal Pair Bingo, and again, there are links to these things in the written article on Hacking Chinese. You can also check out my pronunciation course, pronunciation.hackingchinese.com, which does include a feedback option. What's the best environment to practice speaking? We're all different, but having a patient conversation partner who is good at communicating with you at your level without resorting to English all the time and without making you feel comfortable is probably the best. This could be a friendly significant other, a language exchange partner, a hired professional, or, or someone else. Your mileage may vary. I can't afford a tutor. What should I do? 
Find Chinese-speaking people where you live and see if they are interested in speaking with you. If you're in China, this is much easier of course, but universities across the world typically have lots of exchange students from China, although that is a little bit different now uh, during the pandemic and all that, but still you can find Chinese people around where you live. A language exchange might work, you can also try talking to yourself, which is actually surprisingly useful. And the final question in this category, what resources do you recommend for improving listening and speaking? Of course, again, you can check out Hacking Chinese Resources, but I also keep a shorter list of updated resources for listening and speaking in articles I write related to challenges that I run relating to listening and speaking. And again, there are links in the written article on Hacking Chinese. For speaking, I recommend Audacity for mimicking, and then you can also use apps like Hi Native and Hello Talk if you want to get in touch with native speakers. And if you want to hire tutors online, there are many services to do so, but you can check out italki if you want. Let's move on to category number four, which is Mandarin tones and pronunciation. How should I learn pronunciation as a beginner? By listening, mimicking and getting feedback. You will also benefit from learning a bit of theory about pronunciation, because it's highly unlikely that you'll be able to even hear the correct sounds and tones some of the time. You should also make really sure you learn pinyin properly, including exceptions, spelling rules and so on. This is rather easy after all, and that this is not a good excuse to get pronunciation wrong. You should never guess how something is pronounced, so just use a pinyin chart with audio so you can have an audio reference and listen. So you should learn pronunciation by listening and mimicking, not by reading pinyin. So a follow-up question to that, do you have any tips for how to learn pinyin? Like I said, base it off listening and mimicking first rather than reading pinyin. Pinyin is useful for many things, but don't read it as if it were English. Another suggestion is to think of pinyin in terms of initials and finals, not individual letters. So for example, you memorize the pronunciation of A and G as ang, you don't think of it as A N G, and then you think, okay, how is A pronounced? How is N pronounced? How is G pronounced? So think of them as bigger units than that. Next, what are tones? Do I have to learn them? Tones are changes in pitch that are used to create different words, similar to how long and short vowels in English can be used to create different words. So for example, the words peak and pick are different words in English, and in a similar vein, syllables in Chinese with different tones also mean completely different things and are indeed different words. So yes, you have to learn tones, and not doing so makes as much sense as ignoring vowel length in English, i.e. none at all. Tones are also different from intonation, which does not create different words. So in English, for example, we can ask a question by using a rising tone. So we can say T, if you want to ask someone if they want T. And if they want to answer you, they will say T with a falling tone. And then it turns into a statement. And this is not tone, uh, because it still refers to the same beverage here. But in Chinese, these pitch differences, the rising, falling, high, low, and so on, they do create different words. I have written a more comprehensive guide for learning tones, and again, links in the written article on Hacking Chinese. And a follow-up question to that, how should I learn tones? The answer is the same way you learn pronunciation in general, so listening and mimicking. Tones can be a bit extra tricky because many students don't even hear the difference and then it's very hard to mimic. There is a bit of research into how to learn new sounds and new tones like this, and what tends to work is exposure over time, and especially varied exposure over time, so you need to hear many different people saying these tones and using these tones. And if you struggle with basic tones, i.e. single tones, I actually created a small course for this as part of a research project many years ago. Moving on, I can pronounce tones individually, but struggle with words. What should I do? You should stop focusing on individual tones and spend all your time with tone pairs instead. There are only 20 unique tone pairs and these cover a very large majority of words. So you learn one word for each tone pair and you make sure you learn it really well and then you apply it to the other words that have the same tone combination. Next, I can't afford your pronunciation course or a tutor, are there any free alternatives? 
Well, I have suggested one already, and that was the tone or minimal pair bingo that we talked about when we talked about pronunciation. Uh, but apart from that, I would say that mimicking in general gets you pretty far. So very closely mimicking how someone is saying something and making sure you're saying it exactly the same way can take you very far. If you want more resources for Chinese pronunciation, I have put those in the written article on Hacking Chinese, including a pinyin chart with audio and also a guide to basic Mandarin phonetics. The time has come to move on to category number five, which is reading, writing, and communicating in text. The first question is, should I learn Chinese characters from day one? My answer is no, not unless you really want to or if it's required of you. I think you should focus on the spoken language first, as delaying characters just makes them easier to learn, whereas delaying things like tones and pronunciation in general makes them harder to learn the longer you wait. Also, not having to learn everything at once is nice. Next, I want to learn characters, but should I learn to write them by hand? I think it's good to learn how to write the most common characters by hand, but beyond that you can skip handwriting if you don't enjoy it, or if you don't need it for some reason. Reading and typing is enough for most cases, and if you insist on being able to write by hand everything you can say, you will slow down progress in general by quite a substantial amount. I want or need to write by hand, but my handwriting is ugly. How can I improve? You should focus on writing clear and easy to read characters, and they don't have to look good. Well, if you really want them to look good, that's a different question, but maybe not something about language learning as such. Some teachers are way too picky when it comes to handwriting, and the goal should really be to communicate. If you do want to improve your handwriting, I of course have a guide for that, so check out the written article. How do I look up a character I don't know? There are many ways of doing this depending on what you do know. The easiest way is to use an electronic dictionary or digital dictionary on your phone, such as Pleco or Hanping, and then either use the on-screen handwriting or your phone's camera, pinyin or even English. You can also use a paper dictionary if you really want to, but I strongly against doing that. It takes too much time. How do I type Chinese? Which is the best method? The most common method is to type pronunciation, usually pinyin, and the computer will then select the right characters for you. You can install support for Chinese on your computer or phone, which will give you access to such an input method. As for which input method is the best, that is difficult to answer, it depends on what you mean by best, but as usual I've written about this at great length. If you need support for Chinese on your computer, there is a great website called Pinyin Joe's Chinese Computing Help Desk that I strongly recommend. What should I read as a beginner? Is my textbook enough? No, your textbook is far from enough. It contains very little text and the difficulty ramps up way too quickly. To alleviate this, you can use more than one textbook and jump between them, and you should also try to find texts that are rather easy, or as easy as possible, where you can read most of the text without looking things up. If you want concrete suggestions for what to read, I have written several articles about that, and again, there are links on Hacking Chinese. Should I read on paper or digitally? You should read digitally as much as possible. This is not because it's nicer or something like that, it's just because it saves you an awful lot of time. It means you can use all the modern tools that are available, such as pop-up dictionaries and things like that, which means that you will actually spend your time reading Chinese rather than flipping through a dictionary trying to find words you don't understand. Of course, if you have material that is carefully tailored to your level, reading on paper also is great. The next question is more about writing, so people say my sentences are like English but with Chinese words. What should I do? This is probably because you are translating, which is completely natural and something that happens to everybody, but you need to understand that Chinese is not English just with different words. It has a completely different structure and if you stick too closely to the English original, your Chinese sentences will be weird. So rather than trying to translate on that level, Try to really go down a level and think about what things mean, use what you've learned in Chinese to express these things, and then say them in Chinese, without thinking too much about the English original. 
Obviously, reading more is important here because if you've never seen things expressed in Chinese, it's rather hard to know how they are expressed. And after you've read a lot of Chinese, you will build up an idea for how sentences are structured, what sounds okay, and what doesn't. I find writing in Chinese very hard. Do you have any further advice? And of course I do.、Uh, I have written an article called "Twenty Tips and Tricks for Improving Your Chinese Writing Ability." And of course, links on hacking Chinese. And like for the other categories, if you want more resources, there is always resources.hackingchinese.com. But I've also put a few links in the written article on hacking Chinese. So now we've reached the sixth and final category: Chinese characters, words, and grammar. Question number one: Does Chinese have an alphabet? How do characters work? There are ways to write Mandarin using our letters, with pinyin, for example. But Chinese characters don't make up an alphabet. Instead, characters started out as pictures, but have evolved to a complex writing system over thousands of years. Most characters contain smaller components that are included to indicate either meaning or pronunciation. And I've described this in detail in a series of articles you can check out. And you might also be interested in a character course I built for Scritter. I have a bunch of characters I should learn. How do I go about it? Learning Chinese characters is rather different from learning words in other foreign languages. And I've written an article about eight principles for learning your first Chinese characters, which is perfect for you as a beginner. But the most important advice is to try to understand what you're doing and spreading out your reviews over time. Writing the same character over and over while looking at a model of that character is not very good. Chinese characters are confusing. Do you have a more comprehensive guide? Yes, of course I do. I collected most of my advice about learning characters in one big article called "My Best Advice on How to Learn Chinese Characters." And again, links on hacking Chinese. Should I learn all the components in all characters? No, I don't think so. Learning everything at once is rather overwhelming. But if you see a component appear in different contexts, though, this is something you probably should learn. If a character refuses to stick, it can also be a good idea to look up the components and try to understand the character better. And here, I strongly recommend that you get Outlier Linguistics Dictionary of Chinese Characters, which is available in Pleco as an add-on, because this is your best resource for explanations of how specific characters work. What components they contain and what functions they fill in those characters. If you simply want a list of 100 components you really should learn and that are very common, you can check out my article "Kickstart Your Chinese Character Learning with the Most 100 Common Radicals." I find Chinese characters really hard to remember. What should I do? You should probably try a spaced repetition program such as Scritter, Pleco, and Anki. And the first two of those are paid, but Anki is free, at least if you're on Android. Spreading reviews out over time means that each individual review counts for more, and therefore you will also be able to remember more. I also suggest you look into mnemonics, which are basically clever memory techniques where you leverage how your mind works to be able to remember things better, which is also rather fun and interesting in and of itself. Next question: Do I need to learn the stroke names in Chinese characters? No. Do I need to learn the stroke order in characters? Yes, you do. Inventing your own stroke order will lead to problems further down the road, and there is a reason that characters are written the way they do. And a hint here: it's not to annoy foreign students. It's because it's easier to write them that way. To make this easier for you, I have collected all the resources you might want to learn stroke order, and again, the links are on Hacking Chinese. Next, should I learn simplified or traditional Chinese, and what's the difference anyway? You should probably learn simplified unless you are studying in Taiwan or plan to do so. In most other places, simplified characters dominate. These characters were standardized to improve literacy and contain fewer strokes, which makes them easier to write. But it's not necessarily the case that they are easier to remember or learn how to read. I advise against learning both traditional and simplified at once, because the more you learn Chinese and the better you know one of these sets, the easier it becomes to learn the other. Next, the characters on my phone or computer. Look different from those in my textbook. What's wrong? 
Characters are written in a range of different styles. The one in your textbook has varied stroke thickness, for example, making it look more like brush strokes, but most computer fonts don't have that. It could also be that you don't have the right fonts installed, which can mess things up considerably. This is a much trickier subject than you might think, and I've written a guide for Chinese learners about Chinese fonts, and of course, links on Hacking Chinese. And as before, that's where you should go if you want more resources for learning characters, words, and grammar, and this is an area where there is a lot of resources available when it comes to different apps, websites, and so on. And I've taken the best of these and put them on resources.hackingchinese.com. So we've reached the end of this Q&A, and I hope you found it useful. I think it's rather unlikely that you as a listener had all these questions about Chinese, but I think it's fairly likely that you had at least some of these questions if you are a beginner. I know I had these questions as a beginner, and I've since taught many, many beginners, and these questions pop up all the time. Naturally, I have also inserted some questions that I think that students really should ask as beginners, but few actually do ask, but most of these are actually genuine questions asked by beginners. If you have a question I didn't address here, you can always look on Hacking Chinese, or you can just reach out to me and I'll do my best to help. In the meantime, good luck with your studying, and I hope that the semester comes off to a good start, and if it's your first semester, then congratulations to starting this fascinating journey. Thank you for tuning in to the Hacking Chinese podcast. If you like this episode, please share it. More information and inspiration about learning and teaching Chinese can be found at hackingchinese.com. See you in the next episode, and until then, good luck with your studies.